jQuery version 4 is coming. Well, this video is sort of a different video because this was me who said like jQuery is dead and you know, a few dying technologies which you should not use. And one of them is jQuery, but you would say that, okay, Mehul, then why version four is coming and why are you making a video on this? Because I just want to clarify a few things. I just want to set a context on what I mean when I say jQuery is dead. When I say things like, you know, you should probably not use jQuery. You should not worry a lot about jQuery that much. Let's just talk a little bit about jQuery. Let's just go through it. Where is it currently in today's time? And if you can use that at all. By the way, first things first, I have been coding on web since early 2013, 2012. So it's almost like more than 10 years now and I was one of those persons who has probably built a lot more projects with jQuery as a core library a lot of games I have built tic-tac-toe I have built a little bit of websites here and there I used to use it exclusively in all of the freelance projects I would do so it's not coming out of hate or anything this was one of the libraries which I loved the most jQuery is an amazing library and the extensions it provides on top of it I'm forgetting now but you can also animate things there was jQuery UI, if I remember correctly, which also, you know, extended jQuery a lot more. And it was great. It was great to have that utility. However, there are a lot of things about jQuery which are fixed now in the modern world. We are six years, seven years, 10 years ahead now from the time when jQuery was the most popular thing out there, right? Now, it's true that still more than 60-70% of the websites actually use jQuery, but that's a function of don't touch it if it's working, right? So most people, if something starts working, if, you know, if they just have a website for their real estate business or you know they have a slider a carousal for something on their shopping website which is built on top of jquery you probably don't want to mess around with it right because it's just working the end user the business person doesn't know doesn't care a lot about what's being used so does the user right it's just us developers fighting among ourselves on which technology is better which is not but anyway let's take a look at a few things in jquery 4 so one of the things which I realized, uh, which I actually did not know is jQuery had functions like these, jQuery.parseJSON. So if you look at this jQuery.parseJSON, for example, what you're gonna find is that jQuery actually brought its own JSON parser inbuilt, right? And it might seem weird to you if you're watching this video in 2023, 24, you know, and beyond. It will seem like, why not just use JSON parse, right? But there used to be a time when JSON parse was also not available in browsers. So you can see it says that where the browser provides a native implementation of JSON parse, jQuery uses that. Otherwise, it will just fall back to its own implementation, right? Things like these, you know, version 4 in 2023 end, which is like almost 2024 now. This is the very first time jQuery is removing a parse JSON function, which has probably like close to 100% availability. We can also check it real quick on how JSON parsing works. So you can see that if I switch to all tracked, for example, you're going to see that, I mean, we don't really think about uh, can we use JSON parse or not because it's JSON stringify or JSON parse because it it's it's a little ridiculous to think that this is not available in a browser right in today's time and somebody might complain that okay your website is not working because this is not available because most of the modern web uh, which is using like apis and it's slightly on the application side like let's say slack or twitter or you know these social media websites which are sort of like ui rich they probably rely a lot on these native things which are in JavaScript now, right? So yeah, this was one of the things which I did not know, by the way, that jQuery had a parse JSON function. jQuery is also dropping support for Internet Explorer less than 11, iOS less than 11, Firefox less than 65, and Android browser and PhantomJS. So, I mean, this, this sort of thing might seem like, you know, why do you have to keep supporting so many browsers and everything? But try to realize, try to realize a use case where let's say 10 years ago, there was a management, a client management app built for an hospital in US or in India or wherever uh, you can pick your place. And that website used jQuery, right? Now, technically speaking, if the software is complete in nature, that means if it just allows basic CRUD and everything and the management knows like this is all they need, they don't have to update any part of the software, right? But for obvious reason, you have to update software because of security reasons, because of, you know, so that your systems don't get hacked. Very rarely, I mean, if the upper management is also a little bit inclined to its performance and benefits, that also comes into picture. But for the most part, the only reason people upgrade or people should be at least upgrading consider upgrading is that if you know because 
security patches are there. You should upgrade your operating system, you should upgrade your browsers, and you should upgrade these libraries, which also bring in this sort of thing. So, I mean, imagine a system like that, which is running on Internet Explorer 10 or 8, you know, by default, Windows XP 95, whatever. For things like these, libraries like jQuery have supported for the longest time these browsers. That, that was the point I was getting at, if you were wondering, like, why we are discussing this. Then mostly there are a few things here and there which are changed in this jQuery update. But for the most part, the library remains pretty much the same. You get the same functionalities, you get the same DOM manipulation, you get the same powerful Ajax API. This was a godsend. This was a godsend before Fetch, right? I, I mean, if Fetch is still not available, I would probably fall back to either Axios, I think one of the good alternatives, or jQuery or, you know, a few other things. Writing an XHR request by hand, it's very cumbersome, right? So jQuery, I think I personally started because of this, because of the Ajax ability, because of the background request ability. So yeah, I discovered jQuery UI again. This is one of the libraries which I also used back in the days, like almost like, I think like seven, eight years ago now. And you can see like there are a few compatibilities and those sort of notices, but you see that it still has that ability to, you know, have those nice drag and drop things. I mean, if you still, I, I still know that there are browser differences, browser incompatibility, some of, at some level between these APIs where, you know, you want to drag or drop or resize certain things and just a library like this really helps, right? So, I mean, I wouldn't mind if, uh, you know, I'm just starting a new project and I just want to keep it HTML, CSS, and I don't want to introduce the overhead complexity of React, let's say. I just want to build a single page. It might not be a bad idea to just throw in jQuery right there, right? But the reason I say that jQuery is dead or you should not probably use it is because if you're implementing draggable and droppable in a React app, that's probably not how you should be doing it. I mean, via jQuery, right? There are much better packages now for these sort of effects and these sort of use cases, interactions, which are much more React-y, right? Or, you know, if you're using Svelte, you should have certain level of libraries there. If you're using Vue.js, you should have that. So what has happened now in today's time is that most serious apps are not built with just HTML and CSS and JavaScript. They need sort of a library or sort of a framework. Now, whether that's because of components and all, whether that's because of routing, whether that's because of security, anything, but you wouldn't find like an application which is, you know, just out there, which is like a, you know, just built with HTML and CSS and it's a multi-page, slightly complex application and it's also, you know, easier to code and easier to read and update. If you find that, please let me know in the comments below. But most of the teams, most of the companies now try to prefer these libraries or frameworks like React, Angular, you know, Next.js, Vue.js, Nuxt, all of this. And for them, for the most case, this sort of DOM manipulation is either in the library somehow or there are, you know, well-maintained packages for them. The jQuery 4 is almost out. You can see it, this actually, uh, it's interesting to see that this issue was opened in August 29, 2022, which is like almost one and a half years ago now. And now by, you know, just the last three days ago, jQuery 4 is coming soon now. So I'm expecting like it would probably be out in some time. But yeah, what do you think? This is like another version, major version upgrade. Although I'm not sure if jQuery follows semantic versioning exactly. I think it does because they are, you know, just listing down breaking changes and then a few things. So I think they do follow semantic versioning. But what do you think about this? What do you think about jQuery? Do you personally use anything, any sort of jQuery in your own projects? Let me know in the comments below. That's all for this one. I'm going to see you in the next video really soon.